The world of cybersecurity is upside down again as yet another ransomware kills computers around the world and spreads like a Californian wildfire. It's a perfected ransomware that learned from its predecessor WannaCry but is actually built on a separate malware called Petia. Once again, it exploits Windows vulnerability, which was weaponized by the National Security Agency, which was leaked by the Shadow Brokers hacking group, and which was patched whole month before its release. It's almost as if we don't learn from our past mistakes. This ransomware appears to be more professionally coded, doesn't have as many bugs, and is distributed through several vectors of infection. To spread through the internet, Petya uses the same Eternal Blue exploit, a nickname by the NSA for a Windows SMB vulnerability. Once it infects just one device, it spreads through the entire network via PSXEC by accessing administrative credentials of the infected computer. It doesn't just encrypt all the files on your computer, it targets the entire file system, which means the whole operating system is rendered unusable. Initially, the ransomware was receiving payments of $300 in Bitcoin, but since their email address to exchange the keys was blocked by the email provider, once a disk gets encrypted, there is no going back. These facts about the attack leave many experts to speculate that the ransomware might not be in it just for the money, but to put it simply, some men just want to watch the world burn. These attacks are reoccurring on an increasing frequency, scale and strength. A month ago, a bunch of medium level IT junkies took advantage of a leaked NSA weapon and turned it into a cyber nuclear bomb that killed above 700,000 devices in hospitals, governments, businesses and transportation systems around the world. The attack was largely mitigated thanks to the discovery of a kill switch. This time there is no kill switch and the ransomware has more modes of replication. These events are telling a lot about the current state we live in. Well, first of all, we know that people don't give a shit about patching their systems. Just one scam from an antivirus company revealed 38 million systems that have not upgraded since the release of the patches. The real number is estimated to be even much higher than this. Secondly, both WannaCry and NotPetya have become one of the greatest attacks in history. Neither of them would happen if it wasn't for the existence of the secretive programs of government intelligence agencies with tech giants. It's not the fault that they got leaked by a hostile hacking group. In the world of cybersecurity, breaches and leaks are inevitable. Therefore, the best strategy for the fans is to be prepared when they happen. So one good tactic to prevent assets from getting stolen is to have nothing to be stolen. Which means we should really advance our debates on whether we really need these privacy balloting programs that expose our security to greater risks the longer they exist, yet I hear no such amendments being proposed as a result of this. The very existence of these programs and the vastness of the intelligence complex opens up new venues for successful infections. Out of all people, the government is always the one with the weakest cybersecurity. So why should it be given so much centralized power? That seems like the worst idea of all. But it is the one that grants the intelligence community some 50 plus billion dollar a year from taxpayers' money. And this brings me to my third point. So we have this bunch of multi-billion dollar spying agencies that have been tasked to defend our cyberspace. They are several Several orders of magnitude away from their second best competition, yet as it seems they got fairly easily obliterated by what looks like a few dozen member small hacking group at most. Everybody is equal before the god of cyberspace. Hell, it almost seems like the bigger the target, the easier to penetrate its defenses. It's almost as if the centralized system was the exact opposite of the route we should take. It sounds like cybersecurity cannot be achieved through the great war-minded schemes. My fourth point is that the only people who learn from previous attacks are the attackers themselves. Anybody is capable of creating cyber equivalent of hydrogenium bombs. Some analysts estimate that WannaCry could have spread to millions of computers without actually encrypting them thanks to the kill switch, so the new attackers built on that and added a couple of additional layers of distribution. Furthermore, ransomware has become the most widespread malware on the market, generating the biggest sales in history of computer infections. Today, hackers who are capable of coding malware are selling their creation as a service to dealers to spread it further. In the case of Petya, they offer up to 85% shares to their affiliates on the dark net. These people don't even need a skill to make the machine of doom that they are spreading. So the fifth point is the one that offers the obvious solution. We need cyber diversity. The one person who mitigated the last ransomware was some random dude who runs a technology blog on the internet. It wasn't any of those hugely expensive government agencies. The most valuable currency in the world is a virtual one that has no central authority behind it. It's the same principle as with biodiversity. If there is one species that significantly dominates the habitat, it will not only become harmful and disregarding towards other species, but the whole environment becomes more susceptible to viruses. 
species. Just one virus could wipe out the entire population on which other species depend on. If you have a diverse environment, as a whole it will become more resistant to diseases and if a smaller group is affected it doesn't transfer to other species. It's even more true with computer systems, especially given how lazy people are to take care of the immune system of their technology. Windows is way too dominant in current times and it requires a whole lot more attention to keep the system safe. Sysadmins and individuals in general are going to be forced to diversify their systems otherwise they will be just as vulnerable as their lazy neighbor. Linux will eventually become a necessity. It's not just that it has smaller market share that makes it more secure. Its architecture with separate root and user access and the presence of incredibly diverse distributions make Linux the most secure and reliable operating system there is. And on top of that it's completely open source and free. So why should anybody ever pay hundreds of dollars for systems that fail on regular basis? Apple, Microsoft and Google are going to hate this fact, but developers are going to have to support Linux as the most secure and fastest platform on the market. Linux has come a very long way to become more user friendly and it actually proved to be the safest bet for every OS market except for desktop. Despite the fact that Linux absolutely dominates the realm of supercomputers, it's still just as unique a setup as it was at its birth. Anybody can create their own Linux distribution, which means there is no centralized formula hackers could follow. Every attempt of infiltration would require that much work to specialize it for almost each separate system. But from other politicians we are only going to hear the same bureaucratic prayer we hear every time. If our bureaucracy is not working, it's because we need more bureaucracy. If our spying doesn't work yet, we need more spying. If centralization of the internet doesn't work, we need more centralization. Yeah, we sure know better. So that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like and uh, share your thoughts in the comment section below. Feel free to share the video and subscribe for more content like this in the future. See you later.